we talked about last week. We're going to do a summary of what we talked about last week. And I'm just going to just touch on some things. You know, we talk about the spirit of praise, the importance of praise. I hope you guys can see my screen. And we talk about Laban and how, I mean, talk about how Moses mentioned in Exodus 33, 14 to 16, that say, if your prayers will not go with me, don't take us there. So there's a place where you, when you praise God, you bring the presence of God down. When you praise God, you actually bring heaven down to where you are. When you praise God, you destroy the gates of the enemy. When you praise God, yokes are broken, chains are broken. When you praise God, you invite God into your midst. And I pray that as we continue to praise God, that praise will not cease from our hearts, praise will not cease from our mouths, in Jesus' name, amen. And we don't talk about the fact that in Psalm 16, verse 11, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So when you are in God's presence, depression is not allowed to come there. Anxiety is not supposed to be there. Pain and failure is not supposed to be there because in God's presence is perfection. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. One more thing I, I, I wanted to talk on that I could not talk on is the fact that the Holy Spirit gives ideas. And I'll just look at that right quick. Basileel and Aholia. Basileel and Aholia. I'm just going to look at that briefly before we go into our topic for today. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration that gives ideas. Brethren, ladies and gentlemen, ideas rule the world. Ideas rule the world. Ideas rule the world. I was reading a book by this man. His name is, is it Lee Ayakoka? He's one Italian guy like that. Lee, the Italian-American. See, his name is kind of funny, Lee Ayakoka. He was a very smart guy. He got employed by Ford Motor Company. You know, if you go to Detroit, that's, that's the motor place. GM, Ford, Chrysler. So he was employed by Ford and is the brain work behind the Ford Mustang. If you know cars, the Ford Mustang, he's the brains behind it. He's the brains behind it. When it was becoming very popular, <laughs> um, Henry Ford, he did the third of the Ford, that's the, the grandson of Ford, fired him and he got employed by Chrysler and he did great things there. Ideas, insight, concept is the brain work for money. Ideas, concept, insight is the, is the catalyst for being popular. It is the catalyst for influencing your generation positively. You need a God-given idea. And the Holy Spirit is the inspiration of God-given ideas. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration behind God-given ideas. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 26, verse 13, it says that Isaac was so rich, he was extremely wealthy. He was very wealthy that even the Philistines envied him. The Philistines envied him. But what did he discover? During the time of famine, God gave him an idea of irrigation. How you can move water from the river to your plant. The idea of irrigation made him very wealthy. That's why you dig a well and the Philistines will take over the well. If we dig another well again, they will take over the well. And you know that when you are wealthy in the godly way, you are going to attract enemies, you are going to attract jealousy. You are going to attract haters. You go help us in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration behind ideas, insight, concepts. I will give an example. When I was, um, a couple of years back, pastor, I used to play drums for, me, for my church. So I've been playing drums for years. When I was, in, when I was young, I've been playing drums, playing drums. So I think the leader of our choir back then just quit. She just quit all of a sudden. So pastor said, you know what? Xion, you are our next HOD. Now, it's very strange now. In most churches, most drummers <laughs> are not the head of the choir. I can hear my voice. I can't really sing. So he said, you are the head of the choir. I'm like, what? Head of the choir. Oh, Lord. So when I became head of the choir, of course, a lot of spiritual attacks, a lot of crazy stuff going on. But the Lord gave me an idea. I realized that anytime you are singing on Sunday, when we sing special numbers on Sunday, I realized that, man, our song is not cohesive. Like we practice on Friday, everything will sound well, everything will sound good. Then we come on Sunday, I'm like, what is this? I don't know about you, but when I hear good music, I like it. When I hear bad music, it's annoying. You know, everybody's different, but me, I don't like bad music. You know? So I'm like, what is this? So the only game an idea, he said, why don't you guys meet Sunday morning before church? So I now told everybody from now on, and back then I was a militant. I'm more mature now. Imagine being on steroids. That's where I was. I was very, I was militant. 
because I was the youngest there, people were taking me for granted. I, I think I was the second youngest or the third youngest in the choir. So I was like, hey, from now on, we are meeting every Sunday. Is it 8 a.m. or 8.30? And we're going to practice all the songs. We are going to go over all the songs before we minister. And a lot of them, the old mamas, they say, no, we are not doing it. I say, if you don't come, you are not singing. So they thought I was crazy. <laughs> if you don't come, you are not what? You are not singing. So when they came, we go over the songs again. We go over the praise and worship. We go over the special numbers. And it got better. It got better. It got better. It got better. The Holy Spirit is the inspiration of ideas, insights, and concepts. There's something you are looking at. You just need a God-given inspiration. You know, I'm, God has blessed me and he's blessing me in Jesus' name. But in, no matter how much God blesses you, you need more money. I don't know about you. If you need more money, raise your hand. I don't know about you. So I was not looking like, maybe I should go get another job. You know, get another job and just add another one to what I'm doing right now. But somebody just told me that, is it about getting another job or having an idea that will bless you? and bless generations after you. Look at Facebook, just an idea. Instagram, WhatsApp, just look at, look at Uber, Lyft, ideas, ideas. God, I know the thing about ideas that God will go into the future and bring the future to the present for you. That's God given idea. God goes to the future and brings the future to the present. And that's where you need the wisdom of God. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. For those that are looking for jobs, may God give you good jobs in Jesus' name. May God give you great jobs in Jesus' name. But if you want long-standing wealth, if you want something that will help you serve God without, without abandon, you know, something that will, will not limit you, you need a God-given idea. You need a God-given idea. You need a concept. You need insight. Look at here. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of creation. Let us read that quickly. Oh, excuse me. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of what? Of creativity, inspiration, ideas, concepts, and insights. Basile and Aholia were skillful, but the Holy Spirit came on them and gave them a higher level of creativity and skill. The Holy Spirit gave them a higher level of creativity and skill. If you look back in Exodus, you know, when they were making the temple, when they were trying to build it, and God was giving different specifications, Basileia was the one in charge of the design. But when the Holy Spirit came upon him, Basileia and Aholia, they were so skillful that nobody could compare to them. And he said that the Holy Spirit can give you ideas, skills, insights that will make you look superhuman. You all remember when Pharaoh was trying to punish the Israelites? You don't remember that time. He said that we are giving you hay or all those things. He said, we'll stop giving it to you. But because the hand of God was on the Jews, they knew or they know, they know how to create their own thing. I heard that most of the pyramids you see in Egypt were built by slaves. And I'm, I'm guessing that maybe it was built by the Jews of, back of those days or maybe, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of inspiration. Don't only pray for a job, pray for a God-given idea. Pray for a God-given idea. I've heard one, one. I was watching a financial talk by a reputable man of God. He said, one man in his country, he created an app. An app. On that app, if anybody buys a plane ticket, he gets a discount. So let's say you buy a plane ticket for $200, he gets $10. I'll just give an example. Can you imagine if 2,000 people buy, buy plane tickets? That is a lot of money. And the things of God are great. Bible says, come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So God is saying to you and me that you are not supposed to labor, toil, labor, toil. There is a place of rest. Because when God blesses you, he knows that you will use the money for big things. Many of us here, I don't know about you, when God blesses you, you are going to give to the poor. When God blesses you, you are going to give to your church. When God blesses you, you are going to give to your pastor. When God blesses you, you are going to build schools. You could go to your village, establish water system. There's no water there. Build free primary school or elementary school, free secondary school, free high school for people. You build scholar. You have scholarships for people that can't afford it. God will bless you in such a way that you can even sponsor people that, that have health needs, people that have kidney problems, that they need money, people in other countries that are less privileged. You can go to India, create a program, a food program for those that don't have food. You know, in India, they have animals, but they can't eat it. Oh, forgive for those that are Indians, forgive me. You know, many of them don't eat, they don't eat meat. You see, you see correct meat, but they can't eat meat because many of them have 
They are vegetarians. What am I trying to say? The Holy Spirit is the inspiration and idea that you need. And you don't need a new idea. You can improve on an, on an idea. You don't need a new one. I remember when the iPhone came out. I think I was in 11th grade. I don't remember when the iPhone came out. I don't know if you, if you all remember. I remember when it first came out. That time we used to use Nokia. Nokia 3310. For those I remember, I remember Sajem, Nokia, um, Motorola, our parents. Remember that time when it came out? I don't know if you all remember. I was young. But when it came out, like that was a new thing. So you don't need an idea. You just so you need an idea. You just need to improve on something that's already established. May God help us to see beyond where we are now in Jesus' name. What I'm telling you, I'm praying into my life too. I am praying into my life. And I will say something about God giving ideas. When you get the idea, pray it into fruition before you establish it. God gave me an idea one time. I had an idea and I believe it was good. I did in real estate. I like real estate. I always loved real estate. When I was growing up, I would read books on money. I'm part of making money. And it's good to read books. It's good to read books, please. It's good to read books. I'm reading books on money, automatic millionaire, how to become, all those things. I used to read that when I was in high school, when I was younger, 14, 15. I used to read that a lot. And they talk about it. So I like real estate. So I, I, something came to me, just make a website. But I should have prayed it through to get the intricate details of what God wanted me to do in real estate. In that area, I just went and created a website, and I, the website is still there. <laughs> the website is still there. Is still there. What am I trying to say? When God gives you an idea, pray the idea through. Pray it through. Ask God, God, is this the idea you are giving me? Write it down. Pray it through. Pray it. Ask God, what are the fine details? What do you want me to establish? How do I bring this to fruition? May God give us. Great ideas, concepts, insights that will move us forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at pastors. See, in every area of life, I don't know why, because I have somebody else to preach you, but it's hitting me very deep in my spirit. In every area of life, there must be something that must, that must differentiate you. There must be something that must separate you from others. That is what makes people rich, specialization. Okay, look at doctors. A surgeon makes more money than a general practitioner. Why? Because the surgeon is specialized in some things. Now, if you look at surgeons, now if you look at someone that is a brain surgeon, a neurosurgeon, he's going to make more money than someone that is doing just regular, I mean, just look at it. So when you have an idea, you specialize yourself in such a way that you are different from other people. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Please seek for job, but ask God for an idea or insight for a concept that will make you great. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. Before we move on, look at Laban. I mean, Jacob. Jacob was very poor. You know, if you remember in the book of Genesis 30, 37 to 43, Genesis 30, 37 to 43, you remember then that Laban was a very shrewd man. Laban worshiped his own God. Laban will change Jacob started, let's say Laban was paying Jacob $15 an hour. Tomorrow he can change to $10 an hour. Another he can change to $3 an hour. So Jacob was like, what's wrong with this man? So one day Jacob realized that, you know what? I can't prosper under this kind of man. Now I, I want to let you know that Laban served other gods and Jacob served the true living God. You can't be under somebody that is serving other gods and make it. What am I trying to say? When you are voting, don't vote somebody that is serving other gods. When you are coming under the leadership of somebody, marriage, past, don't let that person be somebody that serves other gods. It will affect you. Jacob was a man that served the living God. He encountered God a lot, but Laban did not. So Laban will change his salary over and over again. So, so Jacob now said, you know what? I'm going to leave this place. So Jacob told him, how about this idea? I'm going to take the spotted animals, the weak animals. That will be mine. And the good ones will be yours. So God gave me an idea where he put something in front of the animals when they met it or when they came together. And what happened? <laughs> Jacob got more animals than Laban. But if you look at the book of Genesis 31, 11 to 13, God gave him that idea. That idea did not come by his own senses. God gave him that idea. What am I trying to say here? You need a God-given idea. I was reading um, Kenneth Copeland's book. I'm almost done with this book. So you can see it. Ah, uh, you can see it here. 
six steps to excellence in ministry. And the man keeps talking out. I realized that this man, this man's specialization, Kenekuna is a man of God in Texas. His specialization is just the word of God. Anything he talks about is the word, faith, word, faith, word, faith, word, faith. So that's his specialization. If you're looking for anybody that can talk about faith, that's him. He's the, he's the let's put it away, he's the king. He's the, he's the boss in, in, on this earth in terms of, I'm, I'm not trying to praise a man as of God, but in terms of someone that knows about faith, he is the one that knows it because he has specialized in that. The other men of God that you can talk about, they specialize in what we do. Like look at like Apostle Selman. There's a way you can differentiate yourself that will make you great. So please don't look at yourself as one small entity, one little person in California, one small person in Florida, one small person in Tennessee, one small person in Chicago, or one, 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 one small person in Minnesota or Canada, wherever you are, or Nigeria. God can give you a great idea that will change your life. God can give you an inspiration that will turn your life around. God can give you an insight that will make you great. Ideas, concepts, insight. Oh, Lord, may God help us in Jesus' name. Now, I raise your hand and say, Father, give me ideas, fresh ideas, fresh concepts, fresh insights in Jesus' name. I'm praying that for myself too. Father, in the name of Jesus, give all of us here fresh ideas, fresh insights, fresh concepts in the name of Jesus. Father, I receive fresh ideas, fresh insights, fresh concepts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. One last example. Our Father and the Lord, I mean, I go to a church called the Redeem Christian Church of God, and the church is headed by a man of God named Pastor Iya Deboye. So I was, um, before he became the head of the church or the leader of the church, the church was mostly in a, they, they did everything in, in Yoruba language, classical. <laughs> they call it the classical church. So they did not have, they did not believe, no, they didn't believe in drums, they didn't believe in all those things, they didn't believe in in, in forward thinking, I don't know, the people that were there before. So when he came in, he had an idea. Why don't we make a model parish? We have a parish for people that are bankers. We have a parish for people that are doctors. People that can come to a church and say, okay, this is my church. Not go to a church and be like, wow, this church looks like a, like a COVID. Forgive me for using that word. So God gave me an idea. He said, we are going to have drums. We are going to have keyboard. We are going to have those things. People thought he was crazy. But now, that idea has made him the, literally one of the biggest pastors in the world. So you don't need an idea, you need a concept, you need an insight that will just change your life. You can improve on somebody's idea and make it your own idea. That before Uber, there's taxi now. You know, you can just order taxi. But Uber said, you know what, you have an app. On that app, you can order something to you. A car ride. That's, you know what, how about you can also use it to order food. You can use it as delivery. Those are ideas. So you don't have to create something new. You don't have to look in there. You can't be looking abstractly and be like, oh man, what I did. God can give you somebody's idea. You can also improve on it. Make it better. Package it as your own and make money from it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Jews are great because God has given them ideas. Do not in Israel. They don't have ground to plant seed. They are not farmers. But because of the ideas God has given them, they are producing so much stuff. They are exporting so much from their country. Israel is a very small country. They are not up to, are they up to 10 million. They are not. But when God gives you a concept, if you're a musician, he will give you an idea. He will give you one lyric. I was watching at an embassy. Just one song will just shoot you to the top. If you are a, anything, you're a photographer, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're an engineer, an idea, you just look you can do this this way, or you do it, you patent it, throw it out there, bam. Money. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going for that. Ideas, concepts, insight. Very important. Very, very, very important. Now let's look at what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at something briefly. The Holy Spirit. You can say the Holy Spirit is so vast. It's so vast that you can't quantify who the Holy Spirit is. It's the spirit of wisdom. It's the spirit of knowledge. Is the spirit of victory. Is the spirit of praise. Is the spirit of faith. He is the spirit of faith. We are going to look at faith briefly. We are going to look at faith. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. I'm going to read this, a scripture. 
you look at the book of, um, if you have your Bible with you, look at the book of Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Now, when, this is on the New King James Version, Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come. And what? He comes. To my servant do this, and he does it. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. You can realize that this man is a, is a Roman citizen. He's from Italy. I don't know. <laughs> He's a Roman citizen. But he said, even among the Jews, I have not found such great faith. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you realize that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are patriarchs of faith in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And the servant was healed that very moment. It does the last thing. A centurion is a big soldier. When a centurion goes to war, he gets most of his spoils. So you are realizing that the centurion is not a small man in the army. But when the centurion came, he came and said, he said in verse 5, he said, now when Jesus entered the car, the centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. So we realized that the servant was very, very, was a very good servant. His servant was a very profitable servant. So the centurion came to him and said, Jesus, please, heal my, my son. I said, my son, heal my servant. And he said, you don't have to come to my house. Don't speak the word and it will happen. I just like, ah, you are speaking, you are, you are talking like a man that has faith. I have not seen such great faith. See, when Jesus is looking at you and me, he's looking at faith. Faith is the currency that is of God. We are going to go into the definition of faith very soon. You can see there that when God is looking at solving your problem, he's looking at your faith. May God help us and give us understanding in Jesus' name. Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We are going to open to some scriptures. If you have your Bible or your phone, please open to these scriptures. I want you to put your eyes on it. We are going to open to some scriptures. You can see here that Jesus himself can heal. I went to, I was in Nigeria, I think it was December, November-ish last year, end of November, something like that, end of November. So I went to a church in Abuja. If I mention the man of God, he's a popular man of God. I went there. So I was sitting where the minister sits. I was, I was sitting there. And one of the men that came from another country, I think he came from Cameroon or something, he wanted to go see the big man of God, the man that hosted the meeting. So I was like, should I tag along? <laughs> but another man that sat next to me, he was one of the men that is in that church. He said, you have come and you have met with God. Why are you going to the pastor again? I know. I said, you know what? I'm not going to go see the pastor. I've gotten what I need. I don't need to see the pastor. I have gotten what I need. When you go to a church setting, you are not going to meet man. When you are here in this Zoom meeting where, where we are right now, you are not here to meet man. You are here to meet God. May God encounter you and me in Jesus' name. Me too, I'm here to meet God. As I'm speaking, I'm learning too. You are not here to meet man. You are not here for yourself. You are here to encounter God. May God encounter us afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So I didn't go. I didn't go. I went back home. I had to go and rest. I was tired. <laughs> I know that I already encountered God. And by the way, the man even came to one of our, uh, the, one of the places there. And I briefly, I spoke to him for 10 seconds. And he said the word. And that was it. So I knew my, my case was, uh, my issue was solved. What am I trying to say? When you go to a place, you are not there to meet man, but to meet God. Because of time, let's talk about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. If you look at... Um, the first point there, if for those that on Zoom, says there that faith is a spiritual force. What is faith? Faith is a spiritual force. Look at Abraham and Sarah. 
you know, if you realize his name was Abram and his wife's name was what? Sarai with the I at the end. His name was Abram and his wife's name was what? Sarai. Can you imagine that God asked him to turn his name to Abraham, which means father of nations? A barren man is calling himself what? Father of nations. And Sarah means mother of what? Nations. <laughs> it does not make sense. Let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read from the Amplified. Hebrews 11. If you are there, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Where is Hebrews now? Hebrews 11, verse 1. I'll just put the eyes on it. Hebrews 11, 1. Then hold on, I'm getting the. I'm using the other Bible, my other Bible. Hebrews 11, 1. Where's my Hebrews now? I better move it. It's something that we know, but I want us to put our eyes on it. Hold on one second, please. No vex, no vex, no vex, no vex. Hebrews 11, 1. Okay, I'm almost there. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Hebrews 11, 1. Now what happens when you use um, this kind of Bible? 28, 20. Okay, I'm there. I'm almost there now. Hebrews 11, 1. Okay, we're there. Hebrews 11, 1 says... Try. I was, I would, I'll read from the um, New King... Let's read from... Let's read from the message. First of all, let me read verse 1 in, in the New King James Version. I'll read the other one from the message version. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift, and through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him from before he was taken. Let's look at it in the message version now. The fundamental fact of existence is, is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Faith makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors. Set them above the crowd. We're talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. So faith sees the invisible. When God says, let us create this earth, and God said, let there be light, God spoke what was inside of him, and it came out. And the only thing went and executed it. Faith is a spiritual force. Faith is a spiritual force. A couple of years back, I've said this before, I was working at the adult daycare. I was looking for jobs. I could not find one. I, I, did, I did everything. You know, I've said it before. That, you know, your, your job is applying for job. But it's what are you doing? I'm applying, that's it, applying for jobs. I was applying for different jobs. So it just came to me. I, I, I was a driver. I used to go and pick people. I would drive around Atlanta, pick all these people up to the adult daycare, drive them back, and they'll be cursing you. They're stupid. So some of them, you know, they're old, so their brain, forgive me, Shara, you know, I'm sorry. Let me see You understand? They're not, um, some of them were off. You know, they were not, they were not well. <laughs> you are stupid. You are, they're abusing me. I'm like, ah, you know, what's going on? So one day, I said, you know what? I'm going to dress like where I'm going. So I, when I come to work, I will wear suits. <laughs> so the boss asked me, say, are you going for an interview? I said, no. Are you going to join? I said, no. I said, why are you I said, I just, I just want to dress up. So when I will come, I'm literally, can you imagine as a driver wearing what? I normally, you know, you will wear those some, I mean, you see how drivers dress now, they just dress anyhow. There was even one time, I just, I didn't even care. I used to be very shabby, you know, my hair was also mild. So one day my mom was like, ah, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking like this? Go and get a haircut. I said, whatever, Joe, I'll be applying for a job. She said, don't do that. Go and get a haircut. Look, at, look like where you want to be. 
<laughs> faith is is faith can be very stupid because in this physical form, the, to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal things, the, the spiritual things is foolishness to those that are thinking in the physical. May God help us in Jesus' name. It wasn't long. I got another job. I started working for State Farm, selling insurance. And that job required that you dress up. <laughs> From being a driver, I became an insurance agent. Although this was hang on me, this was hang on. Who is this? Damn. But at least it was better than being a driver. From there, I got another job. And from there, God moved me to the other level. And I'm still going higher and higher. I don't know if you are going higher and higher here. Say amen. If you are going higher and higher, raise your hand. For those that are going higher, they are going to the top. May God take you to the very top in Jesus' name. May God take you from the valley and put you on the mountain top in the name of Jesus. Amen. Faith is a spiritual force. Faith ensures that sin does not have dominion over you. If you are always clobbered with sin, if you are always falling into temptation, if you are always falling one way or the other, God is saying to you that faith can ensure that you don't sin again. Look at the book of Romans 6. Romans 6, 11. Let's read that quickly. Romans 6. Romans 6, 11 to 13. Romans 6, 11 to 14. I want to read that right quick. I want to also put the eyes on it. Man, time is flying, but let's see how far we go. Romans 6, 11 to 13. And it says, i uh, read from the New King James Version. It says, in the same way, count yourself dead to sin. Count yourselves what? Dead to sin, but alive to God. In Christ Jesus, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey his evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness. But rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. But of course, you know, that grace message now, we cannot break that, we can dissect the grace message because grace is not a permission to sin. What am I trying to say? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man, if any woman is in Christ, is in Jesus, they are new creatures. All things are gone. All things have died. Behold, all things have become new. If you are still struggling with sin, if you are still struggling with anger, with depression, if you are still struggling with anxiety, if you are still struggling with, with, with lack, if you are still struggling with pornography, masturbation, God is saying that by faith, that thing can be destroyed and broken. If you are struggling with low self-esteem, by faith, it can be broken and destroyed. May God help us to increase our faith in Jesus' name. Let's pray one prayer and say, Father, anything that is stopping me from moving forward, I destroy it in Jesus' name. Pray it. Anything inside of me, eternal, external, stopping me from moving forward, I destroy it. I destroy it in Jesus' name. You have 10 seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, anything stopping me from moving forward, I destroy it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Look at when... John was killed. John, you know, John, Jesus said him, he said, I have not seen anybody, anybody born of a woman. There's nobody that is greater than John. But God, not, Jesus now said that you and me, we are even greater than him. We are what? Greater than him. Another thing that is coming to my heart, you know, there's some things that are passed down that are just crazy. There are some people that pass down witchcraft. Some people pass down useless things. You see a grandma will pass down witchcraft, wizardry <laughs> to their grandchild. They will pass down evil spirits. They will, they will dedicate their children. They will dedicate their seed to, to useless gods. By faith, you can break from that foundation. By faith, you can extricate, extricate yourself and your family from that. The Bible says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. It is the currency of heaven. Faith is the currency of heaven. We cannot stop. Maybe we just stop here today and do part two. If the Holy Spirit permits, you can stop here 
on this definition of faith and do part two next week. Faith is the currency of heaven. Let's open book of Psalms 113, to 9. I'll read that from my King James Version Bible here. Psalms 113, 7 to 9. Psalms 113, 7 to 9. It says, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That's God. And that he may set him with princes, even with the prince of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. God is in the business of transforming lives. He said he raised the poor out of the dust. For all of us here, God will raise us up in Jesus' name. You know, we are new breeds of people. God will raise you and me up in the name of Jesus. He said he raised the poor out of where? The dust. And lifted the needy out of the dung hill. God will raise you and me out of this quagmire, out of this situation in Jesus' name. And if we set up or set us among princes in the name of Jesus, I've said it before to my home church. You are not great until you stand before great men. You are not great until great men and women require your services. I'm challenging you because I'm also challenging myself. So if you are a doctor, you are not great until your, your client is the president of the US or the, or the president of a big country. You are not great until great people require your services. He said he lifts the poor out of the dung hill and set him among princes. May God help us in Jesus' name. May we be solutions to other people's problems in the name of Jesus. Faith increases your capacity, your capacity to receive and helps you to fulfill destiny. Faith helps you to do the impossible, Hebrews 11, 11, 2 Kings 6, 1 to 6. Let's open this book of 2 Kings 6, 1 to 6. 2 Kings 6, 1 to 6. Don't worry, I'm going to round up very soon. Well done. If you are there, shout hallelujah. If you are there, don't shout hallelujah where you are. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> shout a big hallelujah. 2 Kings 6, 1 to 6. 2 Kings 6, 1 to 6. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or is too small for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take the hands, every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go, go ye. Verse 3. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go with thee. Verse 4. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was cutting or felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. Hi, yeah, yeah. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God, Elijah, said, Is it Elijah now? Elisha, excuse me, said, Where fell it? Where did he fall? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron swim. The iron did swim. You guys know that story. You know the story. They went, they said, This place we are living is too small. Let's go expand. They went and cut beams. As someone was cutting, the axe had fell. He said, ah, sir, Oga, this thing was borrowed. I guess back in those days, axe was very expensive. They didn't have a um, chainsaw. They didn't have things to cut wood. He said it was borrowed. So uh, Elijah said, where, where did it fall? You know, most people say, ah, oh, no, we, are, we are in trouble. What are we going to do now? Oh, hey, Jesus, help us. Oh, hey, I'm going to get money to pay for this guy now. Oh, Lord, oh, hey. Faith does not panic. When you are in faith, you don't panic. Faith does not, tell yourself, faith does not panic. Say it one more time. Faith does not panic. Faith does not panic. I was flying from Atlanta to Minnesota a couple of years back, maybe two, three years ago, I don't know. And the plane was shaking. <laughs> the plane was shaking. The woman, that was before COVID, the woman next to me was the older woman, she was holding my hand. I looked at her like, what are you holding my hand for? <laughs> she was scared. <laughs> It's funny now, but the pain, I said the pain, the plane was shaking. You know when you are on the plane, the plane just goes and wow. So the man was holding my hand like, whoa, like what's going on? But me, I know I can't die in the plane crash. I can't, it's impossible, no. My life is hidden in Christ. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, is my refuge. He is my refuge. 
They that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. That name of Jesus is a strong tower. So when you know that your life is hidden in Christ, and he knows that in that Psalm 91 verse, he said, with long life, he will satisfy you. Nothing can happen to you. Faith does not panic. When you are in faith, you can't be panicking and be shouting like someone does not have faith. I heard a man of God, his name is Bishop Oedebo. He said he was driving somewhere. He almost had an accident. He's a man of God, a big man of God in Nigeria. He was, he was, he was about to, I think he was about to hit a, the curb or something. And the wife was shouting, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. He said, ah, he said, one Jesus is enough. Why are you shouting too many Jesus? He said, one Jesus is what? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you know your, your right, when you know who you are in Christ, you won't panic. Faith does not panic. So in that passage, the axe head fell. I don't know how God gave an inspiration where wood can, I mean, look in the, if you, for those that have done physics, I mean, come on now. If you, wood can even float. You use wood for, for boats. I mean, the traditional boats. Wood can float on, on, on water. How can wood sink, number one? And a higher head, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's supernatural, brethren. Think about it. But what Elisha did, you can also do. It is not something, you know, when you see something in the Bible, it's not, oh, these guys did it. Those guys, even God said that we are greater than them. That's the Old Testament. So faith helps you to do the impossible. You can move mountains with faith. Mark 11, 22 to 25, we'll talk about that later. Because of the time, we're going to stop here and on the definition of faith. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. Please don't lack faith. There are some things I'm trusting God for. And that sometimes the enemy is bringing like, are you, are you see? You have been praying about this thing. It does not happen. And I will say out loud, no. I, I See, when the enemy comes with a thought to you, it comes with something, an evil voice, an evil presence, speak out loud. I reject you in Jesus' name. Let people think you are crazy, but you are casting that spirit. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says casting that imagination and every high thing that exalts himself against the knowledge of Christ, casting it down, every imagination, every useless, vain thought, the not of Christ, I cast you down in Jesus' name. Faith helps you do the impossible. If you are trusting God to be wealthy, faith can help you do the impossible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I hope you have gained something from today. First of all, God, the Holy Spirit himself, is the ins key to inspiration, is the key to ideas, is the key to insights, and is the key to concepts. The Holy Spirit is the inspirational key that you need. There was a long time ago when, when I started working, like maybe 2018 or so, I still needed money. You see, no matter how much work, work you do, you always still need money. So they didn't give me an idea. He said, why don't, you, why don't you start teaching IT? Why don't you start teaching what? IT. Oh, Lord, that thing gave me money. Oh, when I was in the UK, my money finished. You know, when you travel, sometimes your money will finish because you are spending. One of my students sent money. I said, ah, oh. in my own language, oh, well. <laughs> because faith gives inspiration, ideas, insight, and concepts. Faith is a spiritual force. You can do the impossible with faith. If you are here and you have strayed away from God, faith helps you overcome sin. Raise your hand and say, Father, have mercy on me. Pray it. You are there by yourself. Nobody is looking at you. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Wash me in your precious blood. For those of you who are backslided, if you are looking at God, like, God, what is going on? Pray that prayer. Say, God, have mercy on me. Take my life and do something with it. Make me whole again. Wash me in your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we pray for those that have attended today. Father, by your special grace, before this time next week, we decree miracles, signs, and wonders in Jesus' name. Before this time next week, we decree and declare that we will have testimonies to share in Jesus' name. We decree and declare, Father, that it is well with us in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, Lord God, for the victory. Grant us the victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done and continue to do. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. It's already 9 p.m. Eastern. So I want to thank you for joining. Make sure you invite a friend next week. If the Holy Spirit allows, we finish this topic. If the Holy Spirit allows, we finish this topic. 
if not, you give us something else. I'm really enjoying this theme, this is the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has there's so much in him that we have on, that's yet untapped. May we enter into a realm of rest in Jesus' name. As I said, you have testimony, share it. When you share your testimonies, you have more victory, and your victory is permanent. Look at the 10 lepers and one that came and thank God. So please share your testimonies. Thank you for joining. I appreciate those guys for you guys on Zoom on Instagram. Thank you. This is Val. We have a big record here. We have 12 people here. We have four people. Thank you very much. We are hoping for a double of attenders next week. So please, operation. I know there's a church that does operation. Operation, bring somebody next week. <laughs> bring somebody next week, and the Lord will be glorified in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you for.